In this episode, we shall discuss the balance sheet and show you an example which is that of Sarah's Mini Mart based on the adjusted trial balance which we prepared previously. One of the four financial statements of an organization is the balance sheet, that is also known as the statement of financial position, because it shows the balances of the company's assets and how much of these are funded through liabilities and capital or the owner's equity over a period of time. The balances that make up the balance sheet are those that make up the adjusted trial balance and the general ledger both of which should tally with each other. An asset is any property or resource with economic value that an individual, corporation, or country owns or controls with the expectation that it will provide a future benefit. Assets may be acquired through purchase out of capital contributions or debt, hence the equation in accounting, which is, asset equals liabilities plus capital or owner's equity. There are four types of assets, namely, current, fixed, financial, and intangible assets. Current assets are properties or resources that are expected to be converted into cash within one year. Fixed assets are long-term resources, such as land, plants, equipment, and buildings. Financial assets are comprised of investments in marketable securities of other institutions like common and preferred stocks, sovereign and corporate bonds, etc. Intangible assets are economic resources that have no physical presence. They include patents, trademarks, goodwill, leasehold improvement, etc. Let me first walk you through the corresponding general ledger of each of the balance sheet accounts to show you the details of the transactions. This is the general ledger of the cash in bank account, which shows you the detailed cash inflows and outflows of the company's funds in the bank. Next is the general ledger of the cash on hand account, which shows the detailed cash inflows and outflows of funds on hand. This is the general ledger of the account's receivable account, which shows the details of all sales on credit, the date, amount, and customer when paid, and the balance at the end of the month represents total credit sales that remain unpaid. Next is the general ledger of the other receivable account which represents the cost of merchandise for personal consumption by the owner and shall be paid by her the next month. This is the general ledger of the accrued interest receivable account which represents the accrued interest receivable for 20 days that is from September 10 to 30, 2020 on the $2,000 Treasury bills investment of the company. Next is the general ledger of the prepaid insurance account which represents the 11-month unexpired portion remaining term of the one-year insurance coverage for merchandise inventory. This is the general ledger of the merchandise inventory account which represents the cost of goods available for sale as of September 30, 2020. Next is the general ledger of the store supplies inventory account which represents the unused store supplies that were physically counted early morning of October 1, 2020. This is the general ledger of the marketable securities account which represents an investment in treasury bills. This is the general ledger of the office equipment account which represents one laptop bought by the company for business use. Below is the general ledger of the accumulated depreciation of office equipment account which represents the total depreciation expenses. This is the general ledger of the furniture and fixtures account, in which items are listed in detail, such as tables, chairs, display cabinets, and show boxes. Below is the general ledger of the accumulated depreciation of this furniture and fixtures account which represents the total depreciation expenses. This is the general ledger of the leasehold improvement account which represents the cost of repair and painting of the leased store space, estimated to last for one year. Below is the general ledger of the accumulated amortization for this leasehold improvement account which represents total amortization expenses. This is the general ledger of the notes payable account which represents credit purchases where a promissory note was executed by Ms. Smith in favor of the supplier. This is the general ledger of the accounts payable account which represents credit purchases from the suppliers. This is the general ledger of the loans payable account which represents proceeds of loans secured from the bank. This is the general ledger of the capital account which represents the cash investment of Ms. Smith. Take note that the $500 worth of merchandise which was brought home was debited because it is considered a drawing. This is the general ledger of the retained earnings account which represents the net income or loss of the company. A net credit balance represents net income while a net debit balance represents net loss which is the case of Sarah's first month operating results. 
This negative retained earnings of $1,841.95 represents the difference between the total revenues of $14,703.33 and total expenses of $16,545.28 for September 2020, as shown in the income statement. Due to space constraints, Sarah's Mini Mart's balance sheet will be shown in two parts, the first is the asset portion, and the next is that of the liabilities and capital. This is the asset part of Sarah's Mini Mart's balance sheet. This shows you the four types of assets namely the current, fixed, financial, and intangible assets. This is the liabilities and capital section of Sarah's Mini Mart's balance sheet as of September 30, 2020. Also, take note that the only amount you can see appearing in this balance sheet that is not in the adjusted trial balance is the negative retained earnings of $1,841.95, highlighted in red font and yellow background, at the bottom of this statement.